What's up guys, if you're familiar with my laddering videos, then you know, when it comes to Gen 5, I love spamming Choice Band Darmanitan and Choice Band Victini in Sun. They're a blast to use. And it really makes me so happy whenever I get a YouTube comment or a Discord message saying, Hey, I really enjoyed watching those two destroy everything, now I want to make and spam my own Sun team. It really makes me happy, it, I appreciate it so much. However, I think I have inadvertently contributed to the misconception that Sun is still even a little viable in the modern Gen 5 metagame. So let me be absolutely clear, it is not. Now I think there are two main reasons why I have... Uh, because I make sure to put in the disclaimer, hey, I'm using this team because it's fun, but it's not good. Sun as a whole is not good. And I think there's two main reasons why that message may not have been communicated as effectively as I'd have liked. The first one being that, you know, yeah, I'm saying that it's not good, but at the same time, I'm switching Darmanitan into Jellicent and clicking Flare Blitz and watching it die? I mean, come on, how bad could it be? You know, it's probably an exaggeration, right? And the second reason might be is that someone might interpret it as me saying my particular Sun team is bad and not Sun as a whole, which is also reasonable because my Sun teams are like five fire types and a Latios. You know, four fire types minimum. <laughs> so, yeah, they're not going to be very good. But surely Sun still has some semblance of a niche, right? But it doesn't. It really doesn't. And in this video, we will be going over the bans Sun has suffered over the years uh, that have led it to this state of being completely unviable in the modern metagame. It, that is, if your goal is to be as competitive as possible. I mean, if you're just having fun, then sure, use it. Have a blast. But by using Sun, you are admitting you are using a style that is worse than the other options available to you in black and white. The other standard options. So, uh, we're going to start out with this replay from the World Cup Finals of 2013. I am the guy with the Sun team, actually. And this is old Sun. This is how it used to function. Used to have Doug Trio and a Chlorophyll Sweeper. Usually Venusaur, because it was the best. And then you could fill out the rest with, you know, one. your steel is either Fortress or Heatran or both. Because you got to have the spinner. And then you just have another fire type, usually Heatran. And then the filler can be you know, another Chlorophyll Sweeper, something like a Latias, or another fire type. Victini was fairly popular, but Volcarona was really good because it was Volk. Uh, so, uh, this is how it used to function. This is an exemplary game. So, uh, Mew, I used Roar here because I was afraid of Taunt, uh, like a Taunt of, uh, what's it called? Like a Nasty Pass or a Swords Dance Pass Mew just because I think uh, the opposing team had been spamming it in that tournament. So, uh, usually Mew was Taunt, Will-O-Wisp, Soft Whale, Ice Beam, but, you know, very little risk there. Anyway, uh, and potentially could have saved me. So now I go to Volk, and Volk in Sun can set up on Keldeo. And so I go for Quiver Dance, and this Volcarona was what we called Rock Polish Genesect Volk, because Rock Polish Genesect used Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Giga Drain as coverage, and this Volcarona had the same exact thing. Flamethrower, HP Ice for Garchomp and Dragonite, and Giga Drain for Waters. And, you know, in retrospect, I probably would have put Bug Puzz on, because... <laughs> well, HP Ice also hits the Lotties, so that's why a uh, big reason why it's good. So, maybe not. But yeah, the whole point is, yeah, I can't really hurt T-Tar that badly, but it doesn't matter because I, I almost want it to die to T-Tar because that means Dugtrio comes in, and he even has the Rock Slide just for the Volk, and then I Stealth Rock in case it was Shed Shell, so I at least accomplished something as he switched out. But yeah, he, he stays in, and now Dugtrio doesn't even KO T-Tar, but it brings it down to Rock's range, so Sun is up. So thanks to... You know, Doug Trio, Sun goes up, and even though I've sacrificed two Pokemon to get it up, it's worth it, because now, uh, something like, well, mainly Venusaur is a massive threat, and then I sack another Pokemon to get it in, but even something like a Flame Charge Solar Beam Heatran is gonna go crazy with no T-Tar in the picture. So, as you can see here, it's Doug Trio that's fueling Sun, and then, if Heatran can't finish the job, 
Oh, I just love watching Keldeo disintegrate. So yeah, Jirachi flinches it out because Jirachi. But it doesn't matter because now Venusaur gets a growth off and because it outruns Scarfers instantly, then it will just sweep. So you can see this is how Sun used to function with Dugtrio facilitating these crazy fast, crazy powerful offensive threats. So, yeah, Venusaur, death, and that was after Heatran, and, you know, I'm sure if I played it differently, then Volcarona was, actually Volcarona was a huge threat as well, so, that was just to guarantee the Dug Trap. Anyway, so, that's how it used to function. Then, in, that was, this was a World Cup Finals 2013, then in 2015, it was banned. Uh, or rather, chlorophyll alongside drought was banned. So everyone thought, okay, sun is dead. And then sometime in 2016, people started experimenting with the bulkier side of sun because Dugtrio was still available. So that meant they could facilitate Cresselia really nicely. So sun went in more a more defensive direction through 2016, 2017. And this replay I'm showing you is from uh, the first week of Smogun Premier League 2018. And so this is what Sun became. It became viable again, tournament-worthy viable. And this is its new direction. <laughs> Sorry, my mind is freezing from uh, trying to comprehend all these different Pokemon at the same time. So yeah, Cress is the... Now Sun does not go without Cress. There's often things like Chansey, and you also throw in things like Volcarona. Uh, the Dragonite on McMegan's team here is more of a filler pick. It's great with Sun because it means there's no sand and it can roost up to multi-scale easily. But uh, in that slot you could easily see, you usually did see something like a Chansey to thwart Latios, things like that. So you went in a bulky direction. But again, Dugtrio was the thing that held it together. And you think, well, Dugtrio is just good for Titar and Heatran, but you know, what about Rain? And it turns out, you know, Dugtrio is actually very important in, even against Rain. It traps offensive Politoed. I mean, even just being able to force damage on even a defensive Politoed can be so huge in winning the Weather War, especially with Rocks up. So, uh, and then of course you have these massively powerful sweepers with Dugtrio support. So, you know, Doug comes in, he's going to scout what kind of Politoed it is. It's offensive, so he doesn't want to do it just yet. He gets he sees that it's not lefties, and the Politoed is forced to stay in. He can get the sun up and throw out a Will-O-Wisp with Rocks up, or he can just go to Dragonite and take no damage at all. And now threaten to set up and sub DD on court out. And now if he can't spin, then he can't uh, then Politoed is dead. And look at that. McMega makes a great move, goes to Dugtrio as Tentacruel comes in and punishes the spin. So I mean, look, here, even against a Scarf Politoed, then it's Dugtrio is punishing potentially both Politoed and Tentacruel, and really going... It's making it a lot easier for McMegan to maintain Sun against Rain. As soon as you take Dugtrio out of the equation here, then it would be so much harder. And it's not just winning Weather Wars that Dugtrio is good against. I mean, look, beating both Sand and Rain is really nice, but... It's or helping beat rain rather, but it's also the fact that it can check so many different threat and dragonite sweeps here. Uh, it's the fact that it can check so many different threats in a pinch. Uh, like Cresselia is famously unbreakable for pretty much you know everything in Sun because of Moonlight's recovery, but it, giving it some help is really useful. So we're gonna take this example. Uh, from the same SPL just a couple of weeks later. So Sun, you know, goes up uncontested. And now look, so Kieran Black Outrage, uh-oh, that looks pretty scary. You know, even Crest doesn't like taking those big choice banded outrages. And, you know, that's pretty terrifying, right? And now Doug comes in, EQ down to Sash, reversal, goodbye, Kieran. And that's all you need it for. So no matter what the matchup then Doug Trio will be super helpful. And obviously he's not completely out of the water because a Dragonite can be threatening as well. But uh, I think he was still probably going to be okay even if he didn't do what he's about to do. If he just outraged. Because I think he was... Well, I, I think he wanted to preserve his Dragon Gem. But yeah, that was a mistake, I think. So, but even then, he, you know, it was pretty much Dragonite or Bust, because afterwards he's good to go. And here's an example of, uh, you know, other, instead of Fortress, then someone's got Zatu, 
and uh, Chansey. So there was a lot of, there's not a lot of flexibility because it's always Ninetales, Crest, Doug, pretty much almost always Volk, and then, you know, your last two are your last two. And I think even like Spadef Heatran had some merit there and stuff like Tentacruel even to help with rain. But, and uh, Keldeo. But the point is that uh, this is almost doubling as a why Doug Trio was stupid uh, in black and white as well video. But it's really not the point. The point is that you see how you really need Doug here because otherwise you're just scared. I mean, look at this. Even this has a... This was back when Sandrush Excadrill was legal. And even the Sandrush X... Even this Excadrill could be scary uh, if, you know, with Iron Flinch against Chansey... Or uh, against Cresselia. Uh, but, you know, Dugtrio just removes it as well. I mean, so... Again, now Ch uh, it's just over because Volcarona. But yeah, so that's... It's really crucial. And then after SPL, Dugtrio was banned... And instead of Doug Trio, instead of Arena Trap as a whole, some politics got in the way, and, and it, it, politics got in the way, and we had to ban Doug Trio instead of Arena Trap as a whole. But you already notice the significant difference in being able to, uh, in not being able to handle everything as well. I mean, Arena Trap still needed to be banned as a whole because Diglett could still get rid of Heatran and Titar. And so you could still use Sun as an anti-sand matchup fish, but you know you notice the difference in a game like this against Rain, where Diglett is absolutely terrible against uh, Rain threats. Uh, you know it really was only good against, and it's also not good against things like Kieran Black and uh, Terrakion, like Dugtrio was, because it's what three seventeen speed. Yeah, so it's slow, and not nearly as strong. And Dugtrio is already not very strong. So yeah, so uh, Finch was pretty much always safe here as long as he didn't play like a complete idiot because, you know, look how useless Doug Trio is. I mean, it gets a... I mean, Doug would actually be able to uh, remove... It wouldn't be able to switch into Starmie, but it would be able to remove Starmie one-on-one, -on -one, and that would be nice because then he can get rocks, and, you know, that helps with Dragonite, and, but you know, he can't, so... And, uh, you know, the Wob was not really that useful. I mean, this was when Shadow Tag was still legal as well, and that being banned also made Sun even worse. But as soon as Dugtrio left, it was just, you know, not good anymore. So now, you know, he can't handle Latios, and he had the Fire Gem Starmie, which was funny, but not nearly enough, because he's got to... You know, without without Doug, without Cress, then you're going to falter against Dragons and Keldeo and friends, and... It's too difficult to facilitate Cress without Doug, and Diglett is just not the answer. So, yeah, now we're just gonna keep going through this game, and yeah, Rain uh, didn't even matter because yeah. So, so point being that. San, or that without Doug, then Sun is just completely helpless. And now, I am going to give it its fair shake. This is a replay from SPL 2019, and for a period, ABR and Finch were really giving no Doug Sun an honest shot. And it took place, it, it took the form of complete and utter san, a Sun stall. And the Sun Stall existed when Black and White was the main generation, but it really hinged on Doug Trio. It liked using Prankster Sableye in particular, and things like Subseed Venusaur. But you know the and uh, Jellicent, if not Sableye. But the core of you know Nine Tails and Spikes and Doug and Cress was there. Cress was always there. So then some players, namely ABR and Finch, were dead set on trying Sun Stall uh, without Doug. And they gave it an honest shot, and, you know, they even had some success. I mean, if there's one style that Sunstall is good against, it's some kinds of rain, you know, various kinds of offensive rain. It can be decent, but it needs to play perfectly, because look at what happens if DICE has a... Well, against ABR's team, if there's a Specs Keldeo and Sun isn't up, then something's dying. So it's not very difficult to force that situation and, you know, just kill things. So it's very matchup fishy. That's the whole point. Because you can be successful in black and white without having to match up fish. 
So that's why Sun is considered so unviable. Because it can help you out in a matchup, but you don't really need that. And instead of, you know, trying your hardest to match up fish, I would prefer to just, you know, try and get better at the game so you can win more matchups rather than hoping and praying that you don't face one of the most common styles in the metagame, which is sand. So, I mean, it's good against drag mag. It's good against, uh, pretty good against drag mag. It's good against uh, some rain, but against sand, it just completely and utterly falters. I mean, Rotom, Heatran, Gliscor, Sun is just good night. Spex Keldeo Rain is good night. I mean, something like a Nasty Plot Thunderous is game. Oh my god, it's. Uh, because Nasty Plot Thunderous can threaten even Chansey. And Trick Latios. This was before Sleep was unbanned, or was banned as well. So once Latios can use Trick freely, then it's scary. I mean, this preyed on the fact that Latios at the time was using a lot of Sleep Talk on its spec set. But, you know, as soon as it can Trick, then it just becomes even more nightmarish. But we'll give this game as an example of how nasty it can be. Uh, mainly because of the power of Cress, so, but again, it's really hoping it doesn't face things. I mean, Zatu's niche of handling, uh, Poly or Ferrothorn, and you can do things like stall T-Tars with it and chip T-Tar and help you win the Weather War, but if it was just about winning the Weather War in a vacuum, it'd be easier, but it's... it's having to deal with the threats in addition to winning the Weather War, and... It becomes too difficult to deal with those threats when you're not 100% control in control of the weather. I mean, look, something even like a a lot of Heatran variants are going to really kill this, you know, uh, almost on their own. I mean, he Chansey does not like dealing with Heatran and Sun with status and potential taunt, Magma Storm. Oh, it's it's brutal. So, yeah, uh, AVR has a great matchup here, and I'll leave the link in the description for all these replays if you want to see it but you know as this was a pretty much a great matchup and a great call on abrs in because it was so unexpected but once the jig was up with with sun once it became a known entity then it became really easy to just adjust your team even a little bit and now suddenly it's ruined and of course the sleep ban making it making the metagame less reliant on Amoongus and, you know, Trick being becoming the default on Latios again just completely ruined it. So, that said, if you are really intent on using Sun in the current metagame, for whatever reason, I would give it a try as a stall team. That is where it's going to be more, most successful, because that, it can actually pick and... I mean, even look, even in this good matchup, he had to pray he, the, it, dice got himself into a good position because abr had to hope for the 50 50 hurricane miss there because if hurricane hits that nine tails on that turn then the game is probably over or you know a lot easier so you know, he's making great moves but he just doesn't have the good matchup and even with that bad matchup he was 150 percent away from winning so yeah this is what sun uh, i think there's something interesting to be said for the idea of Sunstall, because things like especially defensive Gliscor become a hardcore Rotom wall, so it can't get momentum or spread burns on you, And but oh, it's, it's tough, it's tough. I would really like to see someone tackle it, but again, if you are using Sun, you should be using the Stall variant and not the stupid offensive stuff, because it, it's just too difficult to, to pull off. Because you're just going to get overwhelmed by all the Garchomps, Terrakions, Landos, Heatrans, Rotoms, Latioses, Zams. Yeah, you, you got to go the stall variant and make the most out of Cress. So, and even then, you're still going to have your bad matchups. And you know, th This was also a testament to the power of Chansey, because even, ABR even loses the Weather War at the end. So, it's more about clearing the field of sand, because that's what Chansey really hates. And denying Ferrothorn, which Chansey also hates, with Zatu. And, you know, facilitating the environment for Chansey to win. And unlike Rainstall, you get the most out of the unkillable Cresselia, who can do things like skill swap or Uniclus, so it doesn't sit on you. So, that's the general idea of why you would use Sunstall over Rainstall. And it can be a little more forceful with Zatu. There's some room for experimentation, but again, risky. So then uh, Finch uses it against uh, Laurel later in the same season. And, I mean, even this is tough because, look, the, the rain goes up and suddenly 
now, you know, trouble. Actually, he even let the tentacle get burned. And uh, he, so see here, Finch is using Magnazone instead of Zatu to also help with other annoying things like... What, 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 I think it was just Magnazone over Zatu to forcibly remove Ferrothorn as opposed to giving the rain team a million opportunities to set up again. Because Magnazone's use beyond that isn't really much. Uh, and, you know, Skarmory, same thing. So, and he's also got the Tentacruel here to help with Keldeo and make it easier to spread passive damage with knockoff, so I, I like that approach. But, uh, you know, it's there's a lot of pressure here. I mean, look at this Breloom, actually, you know, Fighting Gem and Bullet Seed. Because without Sun and, you know, Spore still being legal, I mean, in this case, then, it would be easier because you would be able to wall the Breloom forever with Cresselia. But now Breloom's are even running Toxic, and I mean, then Gliscor walls, but at the same time, Trick Latios against this team is just such death. And, I mean, you don't... I guess Magnus... What's nice about Magnazone is that it can actually be a pretty good Trick Absorber against Latios. So, if you load up with Protect pretty much everywhere, which, you know, tough but can be done, then you can prevent Latios from ever tricking your Chansey, uh, or having to risk a Draco Meteor on something else. So, there's that, and I think this model of Finch's team has some promise for anyone who's looking to retool Sun to the modern metagame. But it's still very much an uphill battle. You know, whenever you're using Sun, it's very much fighting against the tide. You are not really... you're scrapping for a matchup advantage. You're not going to be... you're not going to have as much room for outplaying. So... I mean, Finch... Oh, actually, Finch made... Oh, damn it. I just... Uh, let me fast forward, because Laurel made a great move there with the Focus Punch. And... Yeah, he spored. Oh, no, no, he spored. Okay. And then Finch threw away his Chansey, unfortunately. I don't know why he did that. But if he kept Cress alive, then he was fine. Or er, ch kept Chansey alive, he was even more fine. But Cress is, you know, crazy. Because look at, look at that. He switches into the Mammoth Swine, which I think is Banded. And just moonlights those icicle crashes right off. Is this still playing? Great. Background music playlist on my channel for those unfamiliar. Yeah, so... Flash Cannon. Uh, if it's Scarf Zone, then it also gives Finch's team some longevity. And I think it was? Yeah, so Sun, uh, Weather War 1. I mean, look, it's hard. I mean, even... With all this support, it's hard to guarantee that you're going to keep the hazards off. Look at the ABR dice game as well. And, you know, that's when Ninetales' weakness really starts showing. That said, if you can spread some burns with it, it's nice. But, I mean, notice how there hasn't been a Heatran yet. And uh, I'm going to show another example after this one that shows just how horribly it can backfire. I mean, Finch wins this one nicely with showing off skill swap Cress. Um, so, it doesn't get uh, Earthquake or something. That was... Not really necessary, but, you know, nice. Oh, no, it was nice because uh, he, he gets uh, thick, fat, thick fat, so he resists Icicle Crash, and he can't get Earthquake, so that was really nice use of Skill Swap on Finch's end. But, um, yeah, so, again, interesting, but as, as a whole, still really not viable. There's a reason the last we really saw of Sun in black and white in a serious context was SPL 2019. Actually, World Cup 2019 Finals, uh, that's another example uh, I have that in a different video, my World Cup 2019 Finals video, if you want to check that out. And it's really more of the same, it's just the, the Sun team gets absolutely overwhelmed. Because this is another example I wanted to show. Uh, this is Ojama versus Laurel. And this is an example of how uh, Laurel's using a different spin on Sun, so he's got Zatu and Fortress. And so, you know, he gets his rocks up and he throws away his Lando, and now Tarak comes in, and Tarak isn't quite... Going to break through Crest, but here's what happens. You know, something like... I mean, look, look, Chansey goes down, and now Ninetales is struggling to win the Weather War, and Fori is struggling to find an opportunity to switch in, and Ninetales comes in with Nasty... Pl and Mute comes in with Nasty Plot. And I'll admit, this is a very niche set that Ojama's using, but it just goes to show, look at the insane pressure from everywhere. Terrakion, Latios, Mew. I mean, Taunt Willowis Mew would be horrifying for this team to face as well. So, in a sense, he's lucky there. And he uh, got up the hazard. He got up the hazards on the SD Gliss score. But, you know, it would not be very difficult for Titar to maneuver around this team. So, this is just an example of how 
it's not very difficult for a team to completely ruin Sun. I mean, because with Sun, this game is a great example of how matchup reliant it is. There's no outplay potential for a threat like Mew. Against a bulky Sun team, then they're still going to have some speed and some power, which means that Mew is never going to sweep them. But against Sunstall, then something like this that can boost and has longevity, then they just fold. So, I mean, you could say that Laurel messed up by using will wisp but at the same time, it's... You know, this was always going to be a threat, especially with good use of T-Tar to cut off the Cresselia, and uh, it's it's difficult to pull it off. That's the whole point. And uh, I don't have the replay open because I forgot about it until now. But you can check out the World Cup 2019 of game of Aristaros versus Ruer, and it's another example of how you know Sun had a good matchup until Politoed had Refresh and shrugged off Ninetales as Will-O-Wisp, and it was basically game over. And then there was a Choice Band Dragonite, and it was really game over because even Crest can't take Choice Bandit Outrages that well. And you throw in, you know, Hazard Pressure and just a little bit of chip. I mean, what happened in that game was Dragonite used Superpower on the Crest, did 10%, and then, you know, 4 after Leftovers. And then that was enough to ensure that it's Outrage to a KO'd Crest the next time it came in. So, you know, barely any effort and it's just a ton of pressure exerted. So you're always fighting from the back foot. And that's why I just really don't think... I mean, look, I'm always... Uh, looking forward for the next metagame pushing experimentation and that's you know sun could be you know as we've seen these last couple things then it could be possible but i don't know it's right now it's not looking very good for sun so i wanted to make this video to clear the air and say that look if you're using sun you have to understand it is wholly inferior to the other styles in the metagame you are putting yourself at a disadvantage by using it and uh, yeah, there's a reason why it's not getting used in tournaments. So, that's my second sub-half-hour video in a row. What is wrong with me? Anyway, I just wanted to get this one out there. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any thoughts, please let me know on Discord or in the comments. And I will catch you next time. And, you know, I hope that Sun does... Well, I don't know if I hope it comes back. But, yeah, some people have been wondering, uh, with Dugtrio banned, is there any chance for a Chlorophyll retest? And I would say maybe down the line, you know, sometime next year, 2021, it could be considered. But I don't think it would be a positive. I don't think Sun needs to be viable in the metagame. I don't think we need to make changes to accommodate Sun. Just like we didn't make changes to accommodate stall teams when they fell out of the metagame. You know, I, I don't think that Sun being one of the weathers in the weather generation is a very competitively minded argument that's just more aesthetic than anything else so i don't really buy that so uh, yeah it could be possible to free chlorophyll but i don't think it's necessary to exert even more pressure on weatherless teams and they already have enough problems dealing with rain so uh, i think it's best to just if sun can hack it then let it happen organically through the efforts of the best metagamers who are working to see if they can extract any sort of legitimate value out of it. So, again, thank you for watching. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Hope to, and I will uh, catch you next time.